Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to our um, tutorial today to make um, a dragonfly or two or three. They don't take awfully long, but I've got a few um, sort of variations at the ready if, um, if you want to make them slightly different um, than these two here. Now I just need to be reminded by um, Emma who is here in the background and I can't quite remember but I think we're either now at our hundredth live stream um, or we are coming up to it. So I'm I'm getting, I've just remembered and I should have just asked her a second ago when I spoke to her. But Emma is here um, to support this live stream and if I'm right um, in, in thinking Sophie is here as well um, watching this from home and um, getting slowly edging her way back into the makers um, at, a, at a, a slightly reduced capacity because she's still got a, um, a very small baby. But um, you will see her around a little bit more and uh, maybe soon she will be supporting these live streams as well. So welcome everybody. Let's just say hello to who is here. Um, Alicia. Hello, Alicia. And um, Ashley is here. Jane. Um, Rachel. With Daniel, hello both, Serena is there, Diana, um, Eva, Carol, Vampire Venom, another Diane, oh, Leah, now Leah, I don't recognize that name, so, oh, my, all oh, my first time here looking forward to making the dragonfly, hello, welcome Leah, and uh, we have got Donna there, and Meg, and um, of course, Emma from the Makers, oh yes, Sophie is there, hello Sophie, and Carol, and I think I've already said Diana. So anyway, um, nice, nice full house. Give us the thumbs up and uh, definitely subscribe to our channel. And um, Emma has just whispered in my ear that it's the 98th um, tutorial. If you hear a noise in the background, which I'm hoping you won't, but if you do hear that, that is um, the lawnmower. Um, because the grass is growing. It's um, definitely that time of the year. And so let's have a quick look overhead what um, these look like these dragonflies so they have angelina fiber wings and they have a body that's wrapped with um, um, wool tops basically so it's a bit of a stash buster you don't need very many materials and um, I'll show you um, how that is done in a second first of all I want to um, I've got so many things to share with you. So I'm going to start already um, sharing. Well, first of all, you can win yourself um, the Making Simple Needle Felts book, which is also where the dragonfly is in. So if you need the template or want to remind yourself how to make it amongst 40 other projects, then that's up for grabs today. And what you need to do to win this is you need to tell us what's your favorite element, water, air, earth, or fire, and why. So do tell us your favorite element, water, air, earth or fire and why that is. And um, as always, put it into the um, comments here. And then we pick a winner at random. Just to remind you that this particular live stream will be restreamed on Thursday, um, which is, I should know the date. Oh, tried so hard to remember all the dates but in any case today oh I don't know what date it is today it doesn't say it on the screen how annoying um I shouldn't know what day it is today anyway I'll be told in a minute and I think it, it might be the 8th 8th of um, June so it will be on the 10th at 7 p.m over on our Facebook page you can watch it all over again and you can win yourself um there's another chance to win a book as well right so first of all what you need for the dragonfly today is basically um, pipe cleaners. So whether you have got um, one hour extra strong white pipe cleaner, I will also be showing you this with the gauge 22 paper covered wire and I'm very excited to show you a new wire that we are introducing which is which is um, it's it's hard to show it to you but it is a it is a wire and I, my guess is it's also 22 gauge. But what's special about it, it looks like two wires have been twisted together and then melted into one. So what that what that means is if you just listen, can you hear that? It's like a serrated edge or side, like, well, it's serrated all over. Listen. There. Oh. And that means that it's super, super good to grip um, the, um, to grip the wool. And this one is called, um, 
this one is called the flexible steel wire and um, it's also it's longer it's actually 45 centimeters long compared to 30 centimeters of the of the pipe cleaner absolutely love it it's brilliant for making um, wire armature and especially for making very dainty fairies with um, skinnier arms and legs than some of the ones that have, we have been making and it, it it's not listed yet so don't go run off and buy it because it, it um, we, we we haven't quite got there yet we only re received it the other day but we are already um hopefully maybe by thursday or further towards the end of the week then you can get it and it's actually very um competitively priced you get 20 in a pack and i can't remember now how much it is but it's definitely good price so yeah um it it's good you can't even see it if i hold it up like this the other thing you will need is um is um wool tops i've, I've sort of dug out a load of stuff that's maybe like wispy doesn't look so nice on on um some of the fairies or some of the nicer things anymore so it's a bit of a like i said a bit of a stash basket buster like that name emma came up with it and then i have several different angelina fiber options here today now angelina fiber has been a bit of a um supply issue at our end and probably everywhere else as well but i have got here um some of the colors that we have um either in stock now or that we have recently stocked but if you need to buy some angelina fiber you need to make sure it's the heat bondable which is at the moment all we are selling so you can't go wrong with anything that you buy from us and um it doesn't really matter what color you choose because they they uh, dragonflies have got sort of quite iridescent and uh, changing color wings the pink will look lovely too you can mix them too this is the this is the moonstone this one i'm not entirely sure that we've got this in stock at the moment and um this is the sort of the um gold with uh, purple in it it makes quite a dense cover so um it it sometimes it's better to have some of the um more variegated color here Right, so that is the um, Angelina fiber. And um, the other thing I will be using is, and I thought I'd show it to you now, um, we have got in stock these uh, very delicate organza um, dragonfly wings. And you can use these as well. So I will be making a dragonfly using them instead of um, the homemade um, Angelina fiber. And then I would sort of just use two and slightly cross them over so that it looks like um the one of each makes a pair so that that's another thing that i'm really excited about because the size is perfect for these for these and uh, for these little um dragonflies so they come in different color we have several listed here i have got um at the moment i've got this blue one i've got the rainbow one here and um i've got a green one here as well so i will be experimenting with that as well and then finally um the other thing that i will be using today is our new in um newly stocked with the exclusive stock is now is the fluff grip that um comes from flock to felts and that stuff's potent if you like um if you if you if you want to stick the wool so that it doesn't slip around the wire then this is for you it leaves you with very sticky fingers but you can sort of get rid of it on the wool and i will um use this today as well maybe at the very end because i haven't got any baby wipes with me to get rid of it and i'm also using our beeswax balm which is um has serves the same purpose but it's not quite as sticky so um, i'm going to give that a go and find out how all of this is working i have also got if you're using angelina fiber i've got a piece of paper now you can have a piece of grease proof paper but i've got a piece of paper here which needs to be big enough to fold in half and still have a a good size and i have got an iron Ta -da -da. there you go that's basically um, what you need. If you haven't drawn around your template yet, then you do need a pencil and um, a separate piece of paper as well. What I have actually done is I've cut my template out on onto a piece of paper and I, I show you um, in a minute why. Um, but you, if it, you haven't got it cut out, you can try and use it um, um, in that way as well. So first of all, um, I'm going to get try and space out the things all the news that i've got to tell you so first of all we have got um a date for our weekend away in august now this was planned in june last year but we're doing it in august 13th to the 15th now we have um 
definitely two hands full of of very um, determined and um, hardcore people who booked on for June 2020 and um, didn't budge. They stayed with us. Um, they didn't know what was going to happen. And when we presented them with a new date, they stayed with us too. So these people are definitely coming. But potentially we have got a capacity of up to 30 people because this is a big estate here in the wilderness. And I just show you quickly, I've got a little... Um, I've got a little slideshow. So the summer weekend away, go wild with the makers. This is on the premises. This is the Wilderness Center overlooking the River Seven. There are um, tent platforms in the tent village. At the moment, you can just see ten, two tents, but there are actually 16 that can fit there. It's beautiful, um, surrounded by fields, high up um, forest, and there's a pizza oven and there's a outdoors cooking um, facilities. Um, there are sheep nearby, um, maybe even on the land, depends what where, where we are with the grass at the time. And um, it's the 13th to the 15th of August. Save the date in your diary and hopefully um, we can um, meet you face to face, either re-meet you or meet you for the first time. Give us uh, an email if you're interested. As soon as we know what's happening with um, the what they call the Freedom Day, uh, uh, then um, we will um, start taking bookings for the remaining places. But until then, we're just sort of um, trying to get people on our mailing list so that we know whoever has expressed interest first will get will get the first of us. So right, let's start with the dragonfly. Um, please do tell us what's your what's your element, where do you feel the most comfortable, air, water, fire or earth and tell us why. And um, I'm starting by making a dragonfly. So I have one pipe cleaner, if it's 30 centimeters, you can split it so that it um, makes three pieces. So one of these cut into three pieces makes um, a dragonfly, which means that is 10 centimeter long. So if you're using any other wire than 10 centimeter long for um, a dragonfly, and then you will be wrapping your wool top. Ideally use a wool top, though you can use a wool bat. I love these wool tops. These, these have been knocking around for a while, so they're ever so slightly felted, but it doesn't really affect um, the, the uh, dragonfly. Now, this is another opportunity to learn how to um, wrap wool around a pipe cleaner. So you, I, what I usually do is get the wispy end here and hold it with my right hand, and then I start wrapping with my left hand. You might do it the other way around. So I'm uh, very near the edge, nice and tight, work really close to your pipe cleaner so you, you can keep the wool nice and tight. And then when you've wrapped sort of a centimeter, then you bend it in so that the bend is actually covered with wool. And then you continue wrapping by, first of all, covering up that pipe cleaner that's running parallel to the original one. And then you just keep going along your pipe cleaner. Sometimes it works best if you turn the whole thing round and then just twist the pipe cleaner and let the wool grip through your fingers onto the pipe cleaner. And I love this space dyed wool. This is the flower garden because it changes color. Just, just, it's so perfect for dragonflies and you don't have to do anything. You just literally have to wrap the wool around the, the uh, wire. I'm not needle felting this at all at the moment. I might have to needle felt it. Now, because if I now start at this end, I'm going to wrap the wool in the opposite direction. So I'm actually turning it round again and I'm going to continue working from that direction because it's really important that you keep wrapping the wool in the right direction um, to compare to the layer underneath. So I'm just making a beginning here again where I've just stopped and working my way around to the other side because I need to cover the other end need to cover um, bend that pipe cleaner in as well so we don't have a sharp edge sticking out and then uh, you need to decide which end is going to be the very dainty tail or which end is going to be the bul bulkier head of the dragonfly I think with mine there's no question about it because this looks much more dainty than this end so this is going to be my um, head end and now I've got to wrap the wool on there to build up bulk so we're aiming for um, a, a sort of slightly fatter body and um, slightly smaller head. But because I've, I've actually started at this end, I'm going to continue um, working from that direction so I don't unwind the wool underneath it. It makes a huge difference. It really does because you don't want to um, 
you don't want to unwind the wool that you've built up underneath it. Um, so I'm working from the same direction. I always start out at the same direction. And now I'm just going back and forth and add a bit more bulk to it to build up that body. There you go. And always the wispy ends, I just sort of let them disappear into the wool that's already there. So that's beginning to look quite good. There you go. I have to remember that I've started at this end bit more wool. You could now, as you're getting towards the end, you could sort of um, be a bit more choosy which colour you want um, there to be visible um, at the very end because whatever was underneath you've pretty much covered up now. So I'm going more for the blues and greens here and um, take a slither off. So it's best to work in small quantities um, but add several layers and that way you get a really um, nice dense and solid um, cover and keep keep the wool really nice and flat um, so that it, um, um, it 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 you can you can wrap it around it nice and um, tight. So keep close to, oh look, it's become a bit of a stripey one here. And once you've done that, um, then you could use your felting mat. Um, I've actually used my felting mat to rest my iron on. I'll talk about that in a minute, but there's a big one here. Let's use this. Then you can use um, a fine needle and just stab ever so gently into the body of the dragonfly but go past the wire don't go straight into the body go past it and keep turning it around you really don't want to stop in very deep you don't want the fibers to poke out at the other end you might not even have to do this depending on how um, tightly you've um, wrapped the wool around there so really just just neaten up a little bit just neaten up the wool a little bit if you need to. You might not have to. And remember, this uh, dragonfly is based on a 10 centimeter length wire or pipe cleaner or whatever you've got, um, whatever you're using. Um, that's what that is, um, the length of that is. So now I've got um, a, a shape here that is thin. I've kept it as thin as I can towards the tail. And then I've built up a little bit of bulk and... Um, and, and the head is a slightly smaller again. You can make them different shapes. So if you look in the book, this is the book that I um, you can win by telling me and telling us what, um, um, what element you feel the most comfortable with. Um, and and th there's the dragonfly here. And uh, in the book, it tells you it's a very short dis um, description, but it's good so you get a template, which is um, the one that I've drawn around earlier. So yeah, the, the dragonfly is in the book. And um, in fact, I've used exactly the same wool in there as I'm using right now. Um, there are also 40 other uh, projects in there. Just show you here from the front camera. That's what the dragonfly looks like. It's nice and colorful. Um, if you use the um, Cornish Seaside, that's only got blues, greens and purples in it. So you get a slightly different effect. And I've also got some, I want to I make some rainbow ones as well um, very shortly. Right, before I touch the first set of wings, I, I'm just going to see what, um, what, what elements people are mentioning here. And what have we got? Oh, let's get this slightly, what is that? Oh, that's my little, there. Sorry, just got too much stuff on my desk here. Um, Gina says she's just finished cutting the grass. Um, so, favorite element, fire, so you can rise from the ashes. Nice. Um, I already have the book, but my fave element is fire, because fire, I guess I'm a bit like a fire. Um, Donna says my... Favourite element is water. I love the sound of waves gently rolling on shore. I love the sound of water in a river and water is essential to life. Lovely. Um, so what um, water says Jackie, all forms of life need this precious resource. And when you are close to water, the sounds are very tranquil. Um, oh, there's one to my heart. Earth says C. Choi. Um, as all the elements are special in their way, earth is home to all of us. Yes, I love the earth. Put me anytime firmly rooted with my feet on the ground on top of a mountain and I will be the happiest person ever. Um, Susan says, water, nothing can survive without it. And cooling rain on hot earth smells so wonderful. Well, I do like that, but it's the earth that smells. <laughs> so it's earth again for me. 
Um, Diana says, I think water must be my favorite element. You see, you're all islanders. That's the that's the thing. I, I'm not. You see, I was I was I was born on mainland, like in the middle, middle of um of of the earth. Well, not quite in the middle of the earth, but you know what I mean. Um, think water must be my favorite element, says Diana. I have always been drawn to watery places for holidays. I love my occasional snorkeling experience and I love tanks of tropical fish. And I, I definitely know that um Sophie's element is water too, probably Emma's as well. Not entirely sure about that. Love the water, says Denise. Um, water, Diane says, water is my favorite. My sign is PCs, a water sign. I love drinking water, swimming this in the sea, streams, the sound of crashing waves, sounds of all water features, tranquil, calming and soothing. Nice. Um, ah, Erica. Yes, another one for us. Um, my element is earth. I love to grow flowers, flowers and plants. I think it always is a wonder to watch things grow and bloom and then disappear to come back next spring. Perfect. Water, I like to live close to the sea, says Meg. Um, Catherine says, I like all the elements, but water is my favorite. Listening to the surf is favorite thing on a beach holiday. Does anybody like earth? Serena says, earth for me, as I've always had a fear of, the, of fire and since having kids, I also fear water bless you does anybody love the air <laughs> okay right we need some uh, air lovers now as well but let's move on to the next step of the um dragonfly but before that i will just tell you first of all i've got so much to tell you so next week remember we're doing bees um you still have got time to get your bees wool mix which um is 140 gram of wool and um this whole arrangement that you see on the screen now including the hive makes only a, is uses only about 30 grams so you can do the maths for that um i don't even a b is probably like a gram um also a big another shout out for our advent calendars they are available to pre-order on the 25th of june that may, basically means you place an order for the advent calendar only you pay for it as you place the order and it will magically appear on your doorstep um, by the end of October. So that's how it works. Um, we're asking people not to place any other orders with, with that order because we'll get into a total muddle otherwise. So just the advent calendar and um, they will be released on the 25th of June and um, they um, are £30 plus postage. So um, a bargain for amazingly, wonderfully wrapped little treats. If you've had it last year, I know you will have it again. And if you missed out last year, don't miss out this time. Um, and, uh, so let's go straight into the dragonfly. So I thought as I've, I've made the dragonfly here now, let's just attach some of these organza wings and then I show you how to use the Angelina fiber with the next one. So I'm not sure which set of wings looks the best on this one, but I think probably the, the slightly more bluey purple ones, in fact, they're blue, just look purple on the pink mat. So for this, you have to uh, needle felt them on the top. Or glue them. If you can needle felt them, um, if your if your um, if your dragonfly is not too skinny, and um, then do um, needle felt them. You just lay them on top where they would naturally go, and then use a tiny tiny amount of felting wool, probably um, sort of complementary to the wings, so that it doesn't stick out too much. Just a tiny amount. Lay that into the center. And then definitely with a fine needle, gently stab the wool in to trap the wings. So you have to be sort of quite nimble fingered with this. And, and do lots of tiny little stabs. Um, you can adjust the wings once they're almost sort of fastened on. Otherwise you could use uh, maybe a glue gun or some other glue that you, you can um, leave to dry. And, um, and that way, You've got a set of wings attached already and that's your dragonfly done so quickly. You can churn these out because wrapping the wool around a, a piece of wire or pipe cleaner takes no time at all, especially once you've got the hang of it of how to wrap it nice and tight. Um, the first couple you might practice it a bit more and then you're off. And so these organza wings, I absolutely love them. They're just a the perfect size and we will be using them in one of our fairy projects um, when we actually got a dragonfly fairy coming up. So. 
lovely. I really that's uh, probably um, something that um, I would say is my favorite because at the time when the book was written, I didn't know these wings even existed, and now that they exist, I want these on all dragonflies. However, Angelina fibers are beautiful too, and they're great when you can um, iron them into a film, and that's what we're going to do next. So, but first of all, I want to show you how to wrap this wire. So again, you do need a 10 centimeter length, which um, I have got my wire cutters here today. I'm not abusing any scissors. So use the wire cutter to um, get, get, get your 10 centimeter length. Um, I don't know if this is the best. Let's turn this round. This looks oh, they, they both look as gross as the other. But anyway, there's your um, 10 centimeter wire. So I'm going to have a go with, um, I, I think the, the, the wool will grip into this really well. Let's, I'll show you this first because I want to show you that the wool is, is grips into this wire brilliantly. But I will also use um, the fluff grip and the beeswax balm just to just to give you a demonstration. So there's my rainbow colored. This is literally called rainbow um wool top and I'm going to wrap this around the end and then bend the end in as I did before. So what is the beauty about this wire is that you can make a much slender um, finish here than um, before because the, you don't have that extra cover of the chenille on the on the um, on the uh, wire. So you're literally this is the first cover that you're putting on there. So you can see this is so much thinner, which is what I loved um, recently. I've, I've made lots and lots of very dainty little fairies. So half the size from, of the ones that um, you've been seeing in the fairy box. And um, it is just works beautiful. Can you see how thin you can wrap this wire with that, um, um, with that new wire that we've got here? Go all the way to the other side cover it's the same it's exactly the same what you did earlier cover to the other end and then um, continue wrapping the wool around and decide which end is going to be your tail which is going to be your body's end remember which where you started there's a little bit of wool come loose I wonder if I can felt that down it's probably not much to felt in at all just about yeah, you definitely need fine needles and you just, it's hardly called felting. I'd say it's more like tucking, tucking little fibers in. So that's better. And then um, I'm going to continue with my rainbow theme here. Start with the green again, wrap the wool around it. And so I'm keeping this tail really thin now and I'm going to concentrate on adding more bulk around the body and towards the head as well. with. Um, this beautiful colored rainbow. What's special about these wool tops is that they're, they're space dyed, which means they, the colors don't run side by side. They are, they're actually, um, they're actually, um, can you see how the colors are, are in sections rather than, we've also got some of our parrot here. And this is often the color, these, these are often the type of wool um, tops that you commonly more available because they are they are literally separate wool tops that have just been mixed together length by length whereas this one has been dyed in that exact way so their section they have been dyed in sections and um, what makes it special is that you get sort of that stripey effect but not in a not too concentrated so you can make quite a dainty little dragonfly here so I'm starting at the end that I started remember that was the green one wrap in that direction. It's just so that I establish my wool. I'm not actually putting bulk on that tail. And now I'm adding more, concentrating more around here where the body is, going back and forth. And I'd probably do this one more time. So nice. Look at that. I love that rainbow. So nice. So start again at this end where the green is, work my way up. And now I'm just gonna stick. It's probably the last one that I'm putting on every time I cover up all these nice colors. And I think, oh no, but there's more coming. It's all good, it's more coming. There you go. And of course you can add more. Now, um, 
it's got quite a pointy head there but that's that's okay I suppose again needle felt down a little bit more if you want to I'm quite happy with this and now I'm gonna oh no I can't add rainbow wings well I could but so you could actually add these um organza rainbow wings um, onto there I think that would look so cool but I said I would do um angelina fiber so I'm going to do angelina fiber now right so I'm gonna plug my iron in first of all I'm going to go overhead for a minute my iron is plugged in there and I have got my different Angelina fibers at the ready. I think what I might use is that um, that moonstone, that really a neutral color. You need tiny amounts and even just the, one of these little thing, individual fibers, if you get stuck to you, you'll be spotted in a room of a thousand people. Not that you would go in a room with a thousand people at the moment, but in theory you could, yeah, be spotted. Not that you would want to be spotted either. Now have your, um, either have a plain piece of paper or you could use a parchment paper. Paper. I couldn't find the parchment paper in the house when when children bake that's always it's always um and then have your template now I keep the, I lay this onto the piece of paper let's go overhead so you can see it all better I lay that on there because what I'm doing next is I'm going to distribute these um Angelina fibers very thinly in the direction that the wings will be going so that's like going in this direction and if this is not visible enough because it's actually now white on white didn't think of that it's a very thin film of angelina fiber that i've put over there it doesn't matter what color you use it should be thin enough so you can see that strong black line shining through because that that is what we we need there later on as well um and you can always add a little bit more angelina fiber afterwards as well if you once you've ironed it and it's not thick enough it will bond um, even afterwards again and then once you've done this you fold this paper closed and what I've done is earlier I've actually um, ironed directly onto my um, rotary mat and it didn't like it it started to warp so now I'm putting my um, my soft top earth mat underneath because the wool will definitely not mind being um, ironed on it's actually one of the good things of the um of wool is that it's a fire retardant so it doesn't melt or anything like this it's actually quite hard to set fire to wool and you just go over it a few times um at a full full um temperature iron out it's definitely hot and then you should be able to peel this off definitely works better with parchment paper but it, it turns into a film there you go and that, that should come off as well so it it kind of sticks but it doesn't so you now have got a film here that's quite has got wispy ends because i didn't iron the ends i'm just going to unplug my iron and i've actually ironed it actually has ironed a bit of the of the black surround onto it so, so the color from the wing has come off and now the reason why I have actually cut this into the shape is because earlier I found it really hard with one of the darker colors. I made some of these gold wings and they're really, they're almost not see-through anymore. So um, what, I, what I have done is I've, I've cut the wing shape out into, onto paper and then I, um, I've bent it into half. So I've got that film is bent into half as well. It's, it becomes quite stiff. It's a, definitely a solid um, fabric like a solid piece of something new and then I've just used my scissors and I've cut around the um, the cutout template so that I don't have to and, and I'm cutting both sides of the wings at the same time because they they're um, they should be a mirror image anyway okay. and then you open it up you should have a set of wings ready there so that's the angelina fiber wings now made from the moonstone um angelina fiber and then all i need is my prepared dragonfly there there it is the i'm just gonna put 
the wings on top of it. Now, there is something else that you could do. And um, I know that we we once ran a workshop, I can't quite remember what we were doing, maybe bees or something like that. And you can actually draw onto these, um, onto this um, as well. So you could draw the veins of the, of the um, uh, wings on there. I'm just going to copy it from here. You can't, you could use, um, um, what you call it could use a I'm just doing this randomly now there's no rhyme or reason to it I'm just copying it from the other from the other wing but you could be a bit more organized than that so you can draw uh, veins onto there I don't know if you can see it and um and if you wanted to make that a little bit more narrow in the middle, you could do that too. That will make it easier to needle felt that on. It's quite a strange thing, Ange heat bondable Angelina fiber. It it only works with heat bondable Angelina fiber. So don't try it with um, not heat bondable Angelina fiber. It won't turn into a film. And then you can attach that to the top of the um, dragonfly in exactly the same way. So use a little bit of um, wool. Probably I should be using white now. Um, have I got white wool knocking about? I probably do. Let's get some from up here. This is actually the white shimmer I've got here. Just a tiny little bit of it. You could also glue it on. This, you don't need to needle felt this on. It might be easier to glue it on. And in any case, if you're felting it on, you can felt through this um, film of Angelina fiber then make sure that you trap the wings in that way on there as well. Or just, as I said earlier, just um, glue it on and leave it to dry. Either way, hopefully the wings get attached. It's quite a different looking Angelina, um, quite a different looking dragonfly with um, the white wings, but I still like it actually. And then you can bend the wings in or leave them out. And obviously, different color Angelina fiber makes different um, color wings. And um, that's basically that version done. And then I do I do want to show you how to use the fluff grip and the, the beeswax balm as well. But before that, I'm just gonna tell you what's happening next week. So we had the bees, you, you know that. And then the week after that, we have got, um, which is, it's a double, it's a, it's a part two, um, live stream and it's the peacock butterfly so we're doing this um, on the 22nd and on the 27th of June so you can get your butterfly kit from us it um, um, it makes two butterflies our kit um, so this is the butterfly kit here you can get that I'm just going to move this um, wool mat out of the way so I'm burning my finger on the iron. There you go. That's the butterfly kit. That you um, you can have that to make the butterfly along with me. However, you don't need to have that. You can also just check out what you need on our YouTube um, schedule. It tells you the ingredients you need for the butterfly, and um, you might have stuff at home already. You do need water soluble paper. That's quite important. And then we have got um, that's the butterfly, and then we have got. Um, Oh yes, we've got something coming up on the 10th of July. This is another um, another event organized by the Creative Craft um, Show. And you can get your Seascape workshop pack um, from them directly. And uh, uh, to go there, you need to type in into the Google shop.creativecraftshow.co.uk and that's where our um, products are listed with them. The Seascape is about A5 and um, you can needle felt that along um, on the day, which is the 10th of July, we will be in the felting then as we have been before. So that is on the 10th of July and you need to go directly to the Creative Craft Show online shop to get your um, workshop pack um, to felt along. And what else have I got? Well, I talk about the other stuff. Um, oh yes, one more thing. We're also supporting the um, conservation butterfly conservation by running a live workshop on the 28th of 
July. That makes a large blue butterfly, and I'll show that to you in a minute. And again, uh, again you have to go directly to the Butterfly Conservation um, website to um, place your order. And um, uh, and of course we. Um, and of course, we we um, we love to be part of um, supporting yet another very very worthy um, charity. I I saw I uh, when I got up one morning, I saw this amazing amazing moth on the window. I don't know if you all love um, moths and butterflies. I certainly do. And I just I'm like, oh, that's so special. I even woke my children up, and they're like, oh, mom, it's just a moth, and it's not just a moth. And then later, Emma helped me to find out that it was actually a poplar hawk moth so I felt very very special um that I even knew what it was it was it looked like a really ancient sort of uh, um yeah it just looked amazing look up a poplar hawk moth it is quite a um, a different uh, looking moth and this is the butterfly here of course that you will be making it's exactly that size and um you're not just going away with a beauty beautiful butterfly you're also supporting a very worthy charity and we all have a bit of fun and um and and share the makes that you have made afterwards um which is always the lovely part certainly for us right so the only other thing i wanted to show you is that um you can use um this our light colored uh, beeswax balm which comes in a tin or you can get it in in um in a heart shape so you can run the wire through it now um let's just see with a with the paper covered um wire sometimes that is not there isn't so much sticky it's quite slippery let's put it that way so to make it less sticky you can scrape some of this um, beeswax balm out and you can rub it between your fingers um it it really smells nice it's got lavender in it and obviously beeswax so it um it's really nice and you can already prepare your wire by just going across it that now has um made your wire way way less sticky and um I'm just going to cut exactly 10 centimeters so I can make another um, dragonfly. So that has prepared your um, your wire already and also you've still got that stickiness in your fingers. So you can, let's use that parrot, big parrot wool top because then you can see the difference how the space diet varies from the, um, um, well not space diet. So in the same way as you did before you let the um hold onto the wool i can feel that the 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 um the stickiness on the on the wire is now sort of gripping into into the wool and i've still got that stuff on my fingers so i'm actually um at the same time i'm getting it to stick onto the wool as i'm wrapping it it doesn't change the appearance of the wool at all um it, I can just tell that it sticks, but then if it sticks to my fingers, it also sticks to itself, and that's the good thing. And especially when you get to the point where you are letting the wool run through your fingers, I'm just going to have a smaller part here, your fingers become kind of um, clean again, <laughs> if I can say that, sticky less. So they, they the stickiness goes off your fingers and it goes onto the wool, and that you, I can tell that they're now they're not so they're not so sticky anymore they're slippery again but the wool has been has been made sticky so that it grips to itself it's a nice stickiness it's not um how can i say it's not glue stickiness with a beeswax balm and then you can go over it again you can repeat the process and put a bit more of that beeswax balm on your fingers if that helps you to prepare the wool and even the way so that you can get the wire covered nicely by the time you've uh, done lots of layers you definitely haven't got any of that left on your fingers anymore and um and then you should be got rid of all that stickiness now this is the a gentle way this is definitely a gentle way of of um, adding a bit of extra stickiness onto the wool or onto the wire both if you're using the fluff grip that is um definitely a more how can I put it? It's a definitely more sticky version of doing it. So if you don't like sticky fingers, you won't like it. But if you're really fed up with wire slipping around and not, not doing as it's um, wool is slipping around the wire, not doing as it's told, then you will love the, um, the, the, the fluff grip. And I'll show you that on another piece in a minute. So let's use the same paper wire and 
Um, so the, the the fluff grip is based on on um, more of a sort of petroleum oil, and therefore to get rid of the stickiness of the of the fluff grip, you have to have bees. You have to have some what's it called um, baby wipes. That's what I'm trying to say. Have baby wipes at the ready. You will already feel that this is a lot more um, serious. This stuff. It again. It uh, does melt down or not melt down but it gets softer as you are adding it to your fingers and getting but look at this it's like fingers are definitely sticky you can add that to your wire and it's exactly the same principle so put it into the into the hand that you use for wrapping the wool use your wool actually I want to use some of that Cornish seaside I know I've got some here where's it gone there that's the Cornish seaside let's make a more of a blue, purple and green dragonfly and um, get it established. So it takes a little bit of practice, I think, to work with um, sticky, with a fluff grip and the beeswax balm. Get it established first and now let the wool clean your fingers. So once I've cu I've covered this uh, wire, um, Emma is going to draw a winner. And of course, on Thursday, it'll be Hannah who will draw a winner. So as soon as I've finished with this um, and I, I have a few more um, advanced live streams that I want to share with you, advanced notices for live streams, Emma will draw a winner. So as soon as I go from the over, from the from this overhead camera view, then we can draw a winner. And so I can this this actually once you've established this, I really like this because it now my fingers are getting rid of the fluffy um of the fluff grip and and it's it's transferring onto the wool and it's really really working well and keeping that wool nice and tight around it. I really don't think and um, you'd have to do any needle felting here even the bit that's sort of like sticking out let's get that rid of that that's just my other hand unwinding it isn't it there you go yeah you can definitely um see that that fluff grip is is doing its magic there and my fingers are um almost sticky free now so that's the two different versions um you obviously that's not just for dragonfly i'm going to the um, other camera now that is for any any um, type of wool that you need to establish around a wire and if there's nothing else that you can do with it um, I also there are other things that you can do with it because you can prepare it with florist tape that in itself will make the wool stick as well but these are just different options so we've got um, the fluff grip and we have got our beeswax balm um, both of them are exclusive to the makers so you can go onto the website and buy that now and I've got two more bodies that need a bit more bulking up. But um, this is, in comparison, the um, the one that I've used with, um, with the um, parrot. And this one is the one that I've started out with the Cornish Seaside. So really nice colorway. And I can just see, you could maybe make a mobile. You can have lots of these. Um, maybe, maybe you don't have dragonflies on your pond and you have to put these in. Um, and, and around but I do like I definitely like the organza wings um, on the dragonflies too I can't tell what I like better but I do like I do like them both simpler this one definitely because you don't have to make that film so um, all of it is available at our website and um, and so let's just have a look what's happening in July because we're we're doing bugs and um, crawly crawly things um, in June so remember we've also got our bug in the mug still if you want to add to it to your butterflies and dragonflies and uh, the bees that we're doing in July we are big time into under the sea so we are going to do in July um, let's start with starfish first one we're going to make the starfish um, live as a tutorial the ingredients what you need are already on our advanced notice on YouTube or you can get our starfish kit which makes two and that's on the 6th of July on the 20th of July which is also a Tuesday it's always Tuesday at one o'clock we're making the clam which um, is is, a, is an interesting project too using pipe cleaners same as with the starfish we're using pipe cleaners for that and then on the 27th of July is part one of the mermaid and um, we're going to do part two on the 3rd of August. So that slips into 
August. I have got the mermaid here with me, which I will show you now. There she is. She's sitting there. She's got she's got um very wild hair. We are currently putting together a mermaid workshop pack. There you go. Um, and um, I I love her. I really love her. She has um, there's lots of um, techniques that you can learn, especially about mixing wool, so that it has that really lovely gradient of um, of the color going on. She's got very wild hair. She's underwater. She's swimming away. Um, she has got uh, decorations on, like little water drops around her body, um, a, a, a little sequence around her waist, and she's got seashell um, brassiere. Oh, there you go. She's got a needle felted face. What's special about her is that um, it's a new type of wool we're using for the um the flesh pink is not the New Zealand merino. Let's just put it that way. It's the Australian merino, which felts down much finer. Therefore, we can needle felt her face, and it works really well. And then she's got this wild hair, which is um which is the rummy. But I will be sort of making hints if you wanted to give her curls. That's possible too. So that whole um project will be available in one of our workshop packs, very similar to the. A daisy chain and um, hopefully we'll get that out to we will let you know when that is out but that is the plan that I'm working on this this week so hopefully we'll have it out by next week and then you can um, buy it for the end of July uh, free tutorial that we're doing here on YouTube and repeating on Facebook now the winner today for the book um, this particular book is Suji. So well done, Suji. And whoever gets drawn on, on Thursday, well done, you too. And um, I'm just going to quickly check into um, the, the chat here. Has anybody yet mentioned air? Um, <laughs> Diane says, first time in 98 sessions, uh, she's seen me with wire cutters and not abusing my scissors. <laughs> Even on um, on Sunday, I was on Creating Craft. I actually forgot my scissors and my wire cutters. So I found a pair of scissors lying around. Now, bearing in mind that this was seamless Sunday and there's all these really nice um, sewing utensils lying around. And I'm like, I'm just going to use the scissors for the wire cutting. And I could see everybody like, no, don't do it. But I did. I did. Um, anyway, um, oh, that, that was a nice contribution. Thank you, Diane. <laughs> Oh, um, oh, Ashley gets the advent calendar for a long lasting birthday gift. Yeah, it, it will last you um, at least 24 days. Um, Bridget says, oh, oh, hi, Bridget. I haven't seen you for ages. Um, I love my advent calendar last year, she says. Um, Jane is also loved the earth element, gives us so much to see and enjoy. Um, I've gone from doing my usual. Um, Lorna says, I love to see dragonflies. I had one fly into the living room. It's a big insect close up. I'm always amazed how they stay in the air, but there's also really interesting if you're interested in dragonflies and they're actually quite sort of prehistoric in terms of their um, ancestry. Uh, do read up our Weekend Wisdom on our Facebook page um, as we have every weekend a Weekend Wisdom to share some of the of the fascinating um, details of, of some of the project that we are recreating. And of course, do join our Everyone a Maker um, group, which um, is there for you to share your makes from the makers, ideas, products, and um, and and um, uh, books, kits, su um, subscription boxes. We've got subscription boxes all throughout June. Are uh, is the Dartmoor Pony that's sort of just poking the heads up here, and the Water Fairy, which um, I, isn't here right now, and its ice cream theme for the surprise box. We have a new Facebook group called um, the Surprise Box Spoiler Group. So if you if you are interested in the surprise box but you don't like surprises, um, then you can um, be unsurprised by joining the group and have a sneak peek, and that might swing you one or the other way. Hopefully, only one way. Um, and uh, loving your space die story. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Um, oh, is that maybe not for me? I don't know. Somebody shared a space die so story. It's it's bad reading messages from the backup. It's really bad. Um, uh, meet Ed. Oh, um, so Eva says, so true, we'll need all elements. We will live on Earth. Oh, of course we need all elements. But which one is your favorite? Which one is the one that you're drawn to? Um, we'll live on the earth, need air to breathe, water to drink, and fire to keep us warm. 
um, Maria, uh, uh, Marion says, water would be my favorite too. Susan says, yes, the 25% off birthday discount has finished. However, we're celebrating the birthday all throughout June. So there will be other tidbits that we're throwing in. Just um, keep watching our social media and um, the newsletters that we're sending out. Sign up to our newsletter letter if you haven't done that yet. Just go onto our website and you can um, get get the newsletters. We don't send huge amounts out, so it's not like you get spammed suddenly. We're quite um, con conscious that that doesn't happen. Uh, and Great. I think that's probably all there is to say. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and um, for welcoming Sophie back as well. And um, I will... Um, well, I will see you around um, this week, no doubt. There's lots of stuff happening. And do send us an email at um, info at the makers if you are interested in the weekend away and you want to uh, be considered when we know, as, as soon as we know, when we're opening up extra bookings, um, then, then you'll be the first to know. And of course, um, Suji also send us an email as you are the winner and whoever wins it on Thursday and just let us know that um, you've won yourself the book and then we'll um, we'll get your details and we post it out to you. Well, that's all for me today. Thank you very much. If you've given us the thumbs up, please um, thank you for that. If you haven't, do it, um, please. And um, we've had 4,000 um, we've got 4,000 members now in our Every Wanna Maker. Are you going to be 4,000 and number one? Who knows? See you soon. Take care, everybody, and um, stay safe. Bye.